Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike and the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Warning, calling all fellas and girls. Listen carefully. Nutrition authorities say breakfast should furnish from one quarter to one third of the day's total food requirements. So eat a good breakfast. Eat a better breakfast. Eat a cereal. Yes, you can't go wrong if you eat plenty of cereal, fruit, milk, bread, and butter. So tomorrow, enjoy a bowl full of delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice topped with milk or cream and fruit. There's no beating this eaten for taste and swell. What's more, for added health benefits, crisp, tender wheat or rice shot from guns furnishes restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Yes, and talk about good. Just try them. You'll love to eat Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. It was a bitter cold day when Corporal Delaney of the Northwest Mounted Police pushed two prisoners before him into the small jail at Carson Corners. The Mountie had come a long way that day, and his face was blue with cold and his eyes heavy from lack of sleep. Zeke, the old jailer, poked up the fire in the big stove as the corporal put the prisoners into the empty cell. I'll have this place hotter than a Dutch oven in a few minutes, corporal, so that you can thaw out. If you got some tea on your sled out there, I can heat up some water for you. Thanks, Zeke. Maybe you better make some tea for the prisoners, but I'm going on over the cafe and have an early supper and turn in. Sleep is the only thing I'm interested in. I don't suppose you've slept much lately, having to guard two prisoners all the way from Moose Creek. I was mighty glad to get here, I'll tell you. My job's finished now, though. I'm going back to my station in the morning. Sergeant Preston will pick those men up and take them into Dawson. Oh. Ah, this fire feels good. I sure will be glad to see the sergeant. When do you think he'll get here? I don't know exactly, but I imagine he'll get here in two or three days. In the, uh... Meantime, keep a sharp watch on those two in the cell. They're tricky. You have a lot of trouble with them? That's why I couldn't get any sleep. They tried to escape twice. They know they're going to hang for murder, so they're quite desperate. Well, don't you worry. I'll watch them. I'll deliver them to Sergeant Preston when he comes. My wife will be glad to hear that the sergeant's coming to town. She likes him and always has him to supper. I know she'd be glad to have you eat with us tonight, Corporal. You can wait long enough for her to cook it. Now, that's nice of you, Zeke, but I'm afraid I wouldn't make very good company. <laughs> I'd probably fall asleep in my plate. I'll be getting along now. Well, I might as well walk over with you. I can help you unharness the team and feed them while Joe gets your supper going. I'll bring the prisoners their supper, too. I imagine they're hungry, all right. And I'd welcome some help from my dog team. Come along. As Corporal Delaney and Zeke left the jail, one of the men in the cell rose from the cot in which he'd been sitting. Mike Horton was big and towered over the French Canadian who stood near the cell door. His big hands covered with red hair, Mike grasped the bars of the door and shook them fiercely. Maybe I can break one of these bars loose, huh? Nah, they're bars too strong, even for you. We gotta get out of here if we want to save our necks. Yeah, we freeze or starve with no supplies. I'd rather take a chance on that than have my neck stretched by a rope. Don't worry. If we get out of here, we'll get supplies. How you get out? That old dodo of a jailer ain't very smart. If he comes too close to these bars and I can get my hands on him, I'll bet we go free. You hear what Mountie tell him? He say to watch you. Yeah, he said the money that's coming for us will be here in about three days. That 
gives us a little time for the old man to get careless. And he's just got to do it once. Yeah. Well, me, I'm tired. Food and sleep tonight for me, that's all. Yeah, good sleep is what we both need, and some hot food. But when that old geezer gives us our dinner, I'm going to be watching him. I'll find out where he carries his keys and how careless he is. And tomorrow night, we'll know just what to do. You think tomorrow night we try to escape? You're with me, ain't you? You'll try and make a break with me tomorrow night. Yeah, I can lose nothing. Starve or freeze or hang. There's no choice. If we get out of here before that other money gets to town, we don't do any of them. We'll get free and get out of the country. <laughs> I got a plan. Tomorrow we plan. Tonight, we sleep. The early winter darkness had fallen as Sergeant Preston drove his dog team into town the following evening. As he neared Zeke's cabin close to the edge of town, his big lead dog, King, slowed his pace. And the sergeant chuckled as the dog halted in front of it. Oh, you have to easy now. I thought you'd know where to stop. You want to go in and see Zeke and Molly, don't you? You never forget places that have nice, juicy bones waiting for you. Well, come on. I was going to stop here anyway. Hello, Molly. Why, Sergeant Preston and King. Come in. Go on in, boy. We didn't expect you for another day or so. Zeke said you'd probably be here in about three days. And Corporal Delaney got here with the prisoners. Oh, yes, they're safe in jail. Zeke's down there now getting the supper for them. Oh, now take off your parka and sit near the stove and get warm. Thanks, Molly. Oh, King, I'm glad to see you. Made better time than I expected. It's a good thing I did. It's starting to snow. We're likely to have a heavy storm before morning. But you stay and have supper with us. We'll eat just as soon as Zeke gets back. You know, I was hoping you'd ask me. Why, you know very well that you and King don't have to be asked, Sergeant. You're welcome here any time you come to town. Zeke have any trouble with the prisoners? Well, no, none at all. He was worried about them because Corporal Delaney said they were desperate men. So Zeke slept at the jail last night. He said they didn't give him any trouble at all. One of them was even kind of pleasant. Huh? He said he heard them talking about life in the jail because it was warm and they were getting hot food. That may be a way of trying to get Zeke off his guard. Mm, I never thought of that. But if they're sensible, they'd never try escaping. They'd be taking an awful chance. It's so cold. Most prisoners wouldn't leave a warm jail on a night like this, even if the doors are unlocked. But you must remember, these men are going to hang. They might be willing to risk freezing. Uh, Zeke is watching them. He plans to sleep there again tonight, but he's coming home for supper. He takes them their supper from the cafe. It's closer. So you can sleep at home tonight. I'll sleep at the jail. Oh, uh, speaking of supper, I better go out and feed my dogs. You going to leave them here tonight? No, I'll leave them in harness and take them with me. There's a place for them behind the jail. Inside the jail, Mike and Louie waited restlessly for Zeke to return from the cafe with their supper. Louie was nervous and his hands picked at the blanket covering the cot on which he sat. It's cold. It is bad. With no supply, we freeze. We're gone tonight if we get the chance. That Marty may get here sooner than they expect. And don't worry about supplies. When we set fire to the jail, everyone will come running here. We take what we please from the cabins at the edge of town. Yeah, if everything works as you plan. But maybe no. Well, old Zeke ain't as careful as he was. When he gave us our dinner this noon, I could have grabbed him. But I couldn't risk being seen in daylight. Tonight, they'll be sure we burned up with the jail. They won't even start looking for us. <laughs> they'll be sure we're dead along with old Zeke. <laughs> Quiet. It comes. Well, here's your dinner, boys. Hope it's still warm. I hurried as fast as I could to keep it from freezing solid. It's getting cold and it looks like a storm's blowing up. Well, thanks, Zeke. I'm getting hungry. Here, maybe I can help you, huh? Let go of me! Let go! Yeah, be quiet, or I'll break your arms. Floyd, get his keys. Yeah, hang right. on his belt. My arms, let go! Pull him closer to the yeah. bars. You can reach him now. Get his gun, too. I got him. Now, he, he's gone. Yeah, get the door open, hurry. All right. Then let him have it with the butt of the gun. No, no. Hurry, I can't hold him all night. My arms, they'll get you for this. Yeah. You'll freeze. Oh! oh. Spill the oil out of the lantern. 
You get matches out of Zeke's plug. We just leave him here like this? Uh, sure, he's unconscious. You'll never know what happened to him. I'll take me all burned up together. Here are matches. All right, give them to me. Go behind the cabins toward the end of town. By the time they see this fire starting and start running out of the cabins, we'll be out of the way. Get your park on. Give me mine. All right. This is going to be the cleanest getaway anybody ever thought of. Sergeant Preston had fed his dogs and was sitting beside the stove drinking a cup of hot tea as Molly busied herself with supper. King lay near the door away from the heat of the stove. Molly looked at the old clock on the shelf. Zeke should be home any minute now. Want some more tea, Sergeant? No thanks, Molly. This warmed me up nicely. What's wrong, King? Maybe you hear Zeke come in. You hear something. Listen. Something's happened. I hear people yelling. I'll see what it is. Here's your parka, Sergeant. Don't you go out without it. Thanks, Molly. Look, it's the jail. Jail's on fire. Oh, my heavens, and Zeke with those two murderers. I'd better help, Molly. I'll get my coat. Maybe I can help. As Sergeant Preston, with King running beside him, approached the burning building, he saw the small group of men outlined against the flames, staring helplessly. Zeke and the prisoners got out. I barely see them. Ned James saw the jail of fire, but the time we got here, we could see there was no use trying to put it out. You mean Zeke might be in there? He must be. And there were two prisoners locked in the cell. I'm going after them. Hey, no. It's too late, Sergeant. That roof's going to fall any minute I've now. I've got to try it. I'll put this muffler over my face. Back, King. Stay here, Boyd. You hear? Down. I'm going to get Zeke. Stay there, Boyd. He's crazy to go in there. That's the last we'll see of that, Molly. His dog knows it, too. Quiet, old boy. Sergeant gave you orders to stay here. As Sergeant Preston entered the flaming building, the smoke rose around him in blinding clouds. He held his breath and staggered through it, his face protected by the woolen muffler. But the heat seemed to sear his eyes, and water poured from them. His lungs bursting for air, he drove himself forward and heard the ominous crack of a beam of flaming wood above him. It was then that he stumbled over a figure lying on the floor in front of him. The smoke stung his eyes, but he fumbled for Zeke's arm, and bending, lifted the body to his shoulders and lunged toward the door. The burning timbers behind him crashed. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Everyone loves Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief. Doctor, lawyer, Indian chief. Yes, everyone loves delicious, ready-to-serve wheat or rice shot from guns. Take the rich man, for instance. He says, money can't buy a finer-tasting breakfast cereal. As for the poor man, listen to what he says. Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice make a thrifty deluxe family breakfast with milk or cream and fruit. And the beggar man says, when it comes to a handout, make mine the cereal shot from guns. That nut-like flavor is terrific. Now take the thief. He's really not one at all. He's simply the fellow who loves to help himself to a second bowlful when nobody's looking. And naturally, Mom doesn't mind that one bit. And listen to what the doctor says. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are nutritious. They furnish restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. They're good for you. And the lawyer? I like the famous Quaker money-back-with-a-smile guarantee. It's on every single package. Last but not least, the Indian chief. Uh, me trade in bow and arrow any day for gun that shoot Quaker puffed rice, Quaker puffed wheat. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. Some mighty good reasons why Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice deserve top spot on your family breakfast table. Just remember, wheat or rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk. Always look for the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. He's your guarantee you're getting the original crisp, fresh Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Now to continue our story. As the burning timbers behind him crashed, Sergeant Preston staggered and fell with Zeke's body in the snow that was melting from the heat of the fire. Everything seemed to be spinning in mad circles. He had to fight desperately to cling to consciousness. He was only vaguely aware of men who gathered around him, beating at smoldering patches of flame on his park. There's another. Get the fire out before we try to move them. Uh, you boys, you take Zeke. Take him next door, will you? Okay, come ahead. Put some wet snow on that smoldering place. All right, then. 
That's a ticket that does it. Then the Mountie felt cold, clean air in his lungs. His brain stopped spinning. He felt himself carried farther from the fire. Easy now. He opened his eyes. Well, who... You'll be all right, Sergeant. Just take it easy for a few minutes. The fire. You're away from it. You made all right, Sergeant. We sure thought you were a corner. Zeke. Where's Zeke? Zeke's all taken care of. Those are taken to the cafe next door. There goes the roof. A few seconds more, it would have been the last of you. The prisoners. The men in that cell. Poor devils. That's the last of them, all right. But you did all you could do, Sergeant. How you ever got out is more than I'll understand. Hello there, King. Did we have a time holding that dog bag? He almost pulled Jim and me in there after you. It's all right, boy. I'm not hurt. Guess I better go see what I can do for Zeke. Uh, you need any help, Sergeant? Are you still dizzy? No, I'm all right now. My head's cleared. Zeke's wife, Molly, is in there with him now. She got here just when you started out the door carrying him. Good. Hope Zeke's all right. He must have inhaled a lot of smoke. Oh, he'll come out of it all right. Zeke's a tough old bird. We'll see how he's coming along. While Sergeant Preston made his way to the cafe, Mike and Louie had reached the last cabin on the trail from town. Molly, in her haste, had left the door open, and the light from the oil lamp inside shone in a rectangular patch on the snow as the two men crept slowly from the rear of the cabin. We can take what we need from this cabin, Louie. There's no one here. Door's wide open. We, everyone in town, has gone to the fire. Yeah, that's empty, all right. Hey, look at those shelves in there, loaded with canned stuff. It will take blankets, too. You better keep watch out here while I collect it, huh? Mike, wait. What's your wrong? Look out there in front. Do you see it? Huh? Hey, it's a dog team on a sled. And they're all in harness, ready to go. <laughs> this is the luckiest thing that could have happened to us. Get them turned around while I get supplies out of here. Yes. This is our lucky night, all right. Say, look, starting to snow. Even our trail will be covered. I get that team turned around. Back in the cafe, Sergeant Preston and the men were giving Zeke artificial respiration. Molly stood weeping beside them. Oh, it's no use, Sergeant. You've worked on him for almost an hour. It's no use. We're not giving up yet. Uh, you better let me take over for a while, Sergeant. You're all worn out. All right, Jim. Come on. Uh, Sergeant, is he... Do you think There's he... a chance, Molly. But he, he's so still. He inhaled a lot of smoke, I'm afraid. Can't figure out where he got that blow on the head. Back of his head is bloody as if something hit him. If he were hit by a falling beam, I'd have seen it. He was lying on his face. Maybe you couldn't see it. There was so much smoke. Uh, Sergeant, look. I think he's coming round. He's Keep working, Jim. Oh. We've done it, Molly. He's breathing. Oh, thank heaven. Is he coming too, Sergeant? I didn't think there was a chance. I thought he was done for. You boys better go in the other room. He needs all the air there is in here. Thanks for your help. Call us if you need us. Right. We'll be out here. <coughs> all right, Jim. You can stop now. Lift him over on the cot. Oh, sure. Is he going to be all right, Sergeant? I think so, Molly. There. What happened? Jail caught on fire, Zeke, and you were overcome by the smoke. And the reason you're alive is because Sergeant Preston rescued you. Jail on fire? Zeke. Zeke, I'm so glad you're alive. Molly. We'd better let him rest now. He's weak. Oh, my head. You must have been hit by a falling timber, Zeke. Your scalp is split open. That's why your head's bandaged. Now, you better lie back and try to sleep for a while. The prisoners. Don't think about it, Zeke. Try to rest. <laughs> Did you get them, Mike and Louie? No, there wasn't time. I barely had time to get you out of the place. The building collapsed. I guess it's all over as far as they're concerned. Don't think about it. Uh, no, no. Try to get some sleep now, Z. But I remember now they they got out. Got out? That's what hurt my head. They they hit me with my gun. You mean they got out of their cell? Oh, dear. Yes, they, they must have They set, set fire. fire to the jail, hoping we'd think they were burned along with you. Filthy murders. They meant to burn you alive. Oh, oh, oh. We'll get them back. Well, they didn't have any supplies. They can't get far. Even if they did have plenty of time. They could have helped themselves to supplies from any cabin in town. Everybody was at the fire. That's right. You can take care of Zeke alone now, Molly. All he needs is rest and sleep. Yes, Sergeant. I can take care of him, all right. Jim, come with me. Things we'll have the men search right every cabin in Zeke town Zeke. to see if they're hiding anywhere. Sure, Sergeant. One King. <laughs> I wish King knew who they were. He could follow their scent. Everything they used was burned in the fire. Is Zeke all right, Sergeant? Did you bring him, too? Zeke's going to be all right, boys. Oh, Never fine. thought he'd make it. Sure looked like a goner to me. I have a job for all of you right now. Yeah. The prisoners weren't burned in the fire. They escaped. Escaped? What do you mean? They knocked Zeke out and set the jail on fire. Now I want every cabin in town searched for them. They may be hiding here. 
See if any of you have been robbed of supplies. That way we may be able to follow their trail. It's been snowing hard for the last hour, Sergeant. You won't find any tracks. It'll give us a lead if we can find the cabin where they took supplies. It'll show which direction they were going. I'll be at Zeke's cabin. My dog team's there. If you find anything, report to me there. Come on, Jim. As Sergeant Preston and Jim approached Zeke's cabin, King ran ahead of them through the falling snow. Suddenly, the Mountie heard him barking frantically, and Preston hurried to see what the trouble was. What do you think is wrong with him, Sergeant? I don't know, Jim. Can't see a thing. The snow's too thick. What's wrong, fella? I don't see anything. Neither do I. That's just the trouble. My dog team's gone. Your dog team? You mean he was out here in front? Yes, I left him here while I went into Molly's. I intended to sleep at the jail and put them in the shed there, and then the fire started. Well, maybe they just uh, ran away. No, they wouldn't do that. They were tired. I'm afraid they were stolen. You mean by the murderers? Let's go into Molly's cabin, Jim. We'll see what we can find. One King. This was the logical place for them to come. It's the edge of town. They were here, all right. Look at the shelves and the beds. They messed things up. Jim, you have a dog team, haven't you? Well, it's not much compared to yours, but it's the best in town. Would you lend it to me? You know you don't have to ask, Sergeant. But how are you going to trail them? The snow will cover everything. King doesn't know what men we're after, but he knows that team. He can follow their scent. Of course, he never thought of that. And I'm going with you, Sergeant. The temperature's dropping, and this storm may be a blizzard by morning. Won't be safe to travel alone. Fine, Jim. Glad to have you. Now, let's get your dog team and some supplies. We'll start tonight. King, following the scent of Sergeant Preston's dog team through the darkness, had to slow down to enable Jim's dog team to keep up with him. Sergeant Preston grew more and more discouraged as he knew that the distance between them and the men they were pursuing was getting greater every moment. Jim's team was no match for his own. At last, they were forced to camp for the rest of the night. And it was late the following morning when King led them to a small cabin near the trail. The blizzard had begun, and the wind swirled the icy snow into their faces like tiny bullets. Do you think they stopped here last night? They must have, but they've gone. No sign of my team. Guess we better stop here for a while and get warm. Oh, you has to oh. Yeah, the dogs are tired, too. Phew. This blizzard is really kicking up. Come on, King. You better come in with us, boy. There's a little fire left in the stove. Maybe I can keep it going. They must have left here early this morning. Well, there's one thing in our favor. Huh? This blizzard won't help them murders any. It's getting worse every minute. They won't get far. Maybe they'll get lost, start going around in circles. Plenty of times I'd have been lost in blizzards if it hadn't been for King. When I'm in a spot like that, I just let him take over and he gets me out of it. Uh, I swear I never saw a dog like him. <laughs> Look at him. He's not even tired. My dogs are dropping in their tracks. This is nothing for King. He could keep up that pace all day and still be fresh. Couldn't you, fella? Uh, is a dog that's leading your team now uh, reliable? Not very, Jim. He's used to depending on King. He won't be much help in a blizzard. Jim... I have an idea. Huh? It's a long chance. I'm going to send King after them alone. King? But how Mike can he... and Louie will be confused in this blizzard. They won't know which is north or south. If King could lead the team back here, Mike and Louie wouldn't know the difference. But maybe they're camping someplace, holding in till the blizzard's over. If King brings the dog team back without them, we won't have any trouble catching them tomorrow. Well, I should think you'd be afraid they might shoot him or something. King and I have to take chances like that. It's our job. Come on, King, old boy. <laughs> Up to you now. I want you to bring the team back here, fella. The team. Understand? Get the dogs, boy. Bring them back to me. After them, boy. Get the team. On King! Hope he makes it. You better put your dog team back in the woodshed, Jim. Hide the sled. All we have to do now is wait. The blizzard had increased. But Mike and Louis kept going, their heads bent into the wind. At last, Louis protested. I think we're off trail. That lead dog does not know where to go. You've got to trust him. They lead us to a cabin or something. Can't stop here with no protection. I can't tell whether we're going north or south. Maybe we go round and round in circle. Hey, you hear that? You hear a dog? Listen. Oui. Look. There, that is big dog. Maybe he's lost. Yeah. Hey, look at it. He's getting in front of the team. Yeah. He's breaking the trail for him. Maybe he's somebody's lead dog. 
You think we should harness him? Oh, he's doing all right. Hey, look at the dogs. They're speeding up. Maybe he'll take us to somebody's cabin, eh? I hope so. I cannot go much longer. Mush! Mush! Get along there! It was a few hours later, and Sergeant Preston paced the cabin nervously as he listened to the howling wind outside. Jim lay asleep on the cot. Then suddenly, the Mountie heard the sound he'd been waiting for. Jim! Jim, wake up. That's King. What? what? King's brought the team back. I told you he would. Well, I'll be. You going out there now? No, we'd better wait right here for a minute. If the men are with him, they'll come in. I want you. I'll take you. Oh, no more gunplay. Down, King. On guard, boy. King doesn't let anybody pull a gun on me. Close that door, will you, Jim? Right. Stay right here, King, and keep an eye on these two. That dog. It belongs to you. That's right. And the dog team you stole, well, King considers that team his. That dog. You crooks stole the wrong dog team. And now with King watching you, you won't escape again. King agrees to that. That King dog. If it not been for him. That's right. Thanks to King, this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's program. Discover why Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice win the praise of many a He-Man Hollywood movie star. Try wheat or rice shot from guns yourself at breakfast tomorrow. These crisp, tender, king-size grains are really swell tasting. And good for you, too. Remember, Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice are never sold in bags or bulk. Always buy the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. That's your guarantee that you're getting the original crisp, fresh Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. The Challenge of the Yukon is brought to you every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at this same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure Bonanza 47. Did you ever hear of a dead man being tried for murder? Well, that happened once up in the Yukon during the days of the gold rush. But that was only one of the unusual angles in this particular case I was following. And there might have been more than one killing if it hadn't been for King. It was he who solved the mystery. Be sure to hear this exciting story... Wednesday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.